good kitten internet. Uh, it's probably going to be one of the last times that this ends up on video because, well, things are a-changing. The times, they're a-changing. Good kitten internet. Um, been a while since I did a life update type thing, and I wanted to... <sighs> fill you all in, slash have the closest thing that I have to therapy happen. Um, I have now lived in Norway for five months. Uh, soon, to, uh, like five months and a week, roughly. Um, today's what, the 27th, I think? No. 31st is Tuesday. 30th, this, today's the 28th. There we go. Uh, it's a Saturday. And, well, I should probably divide this up into a few parts. So the first part is what's happened in the past couple of months, because this might need some explaining. So, let's see, two months ago, that would have been August was the last time I recorded one of these, and... So the last thing that I had reported was the fact that we were, and yes, I'm wearing a work shirt, um, old work shirt, I should say. Uh, we were told, hey, look, you are, and the landlord was terminating our lease, effective the 10th of November, get out. Um, we knew that was a possibility because the house, uh, the apartment that we're living in, this apartment, I haven't changed apartments yet or anything, um, was for sale. And the landlord didn't expect it to sell immediately. Turns out it did. Trying to hide the stylus before Zone tries to eat it. Um, it did sell. And as a result, we were asked to leave. As per the thing in our con rental contract about this. So we have found a new place. Um... Uh, we are supposed to take control over it as of the 1st of November, which is this coming Wednesday, and we will be moving in this coming Saturday. So that gives us a little bit of overlap time just in case. I have already hired movers. I have hired... I have also had the movers. The same company is going to be handling the final cleanup of this place. Uh, we have arranged for renter's insurance, which is a requirement everywhere here for some weird reason. Um... We have arranged for pretty much everything at this point. Other than enough furniture for where we're moving to because the new place is unfurnished. But we at least have enough furniture to get by for the time being. I mean, we own a bed. Pretty much all we need. Right, we own a bed, we have chairs, we have desks. It's pretty much all we need, right? Um... So that part's taken care of, and the area that we're moving to is a lovely area that's actually a little bit quieter than here, strangely enough. Um, definitely not as nice of a view. I knew that going through that this was going to be the best view I will have ever had in my life, and I was absolutely right. Um, Son is looking at something outside, and I don't know what. Um, but it's still reasonable, like we're basically in a forest. So, it's still decently nice. Uh, we're also much closer to both grocery stores. Uh, it's literally visible from my front window. Um, we all... Zone, stop licking the box. Zone, no. Like, Zone's right there. He's licking that box that he's standing on. I don't get it. Anyway. Um... Tilt this down slightly, probably? Yeah, I like that. Um, anyway, let's see. Uh, so that's taken care of. Oh, um, it is across the street from the grocery store. It is within a very short walk of the closest bus stop. And the bus depot is actually only eight minutes of a walk away from the apartment. Which sounds like a okay amount until you realize that I'm 20 minutes away from the bus stop where I'm living right now. So that actually works out great for me. I think that's still a little bit too low. Uh, so the new place is overall in a much better position. It's also significantly larger. It's about 30% larger than this place. And it's cheaper. 
Um, I'm paying uh, with the current currency conversion rate, which I will be talking about in a bit. I am currently paying about 2,500 US dollars a month for this place, including its furnishings. And the new place is coming in a little bit below 2,000. So it's much cheaper. It's not furnished, but that's okay. We have furniture. It's, we had been holding off on buying more furniture because one, we found out we were moving. And two, this place is furnished there's less of an incentive for us to do so. But we always wanted to buy the new furniture. Anyway, so that's happening. Um, the move is a week from today. So a week from right now, I will be in the middle of moving. I think I'm going to be the one that's here and Creator is going to be one that's going to the new place, but it may end up being the other way around. I don't know yet. Need to talk to them about it. Um, Speaking of, uh, Creators currently back at the cabin. They successfully walked up the mountain. Uh, that was day before yesterday. And I am so proud of them. They actually did it this year before winter. So it was much easier for them. Awesome. Um, maybe I'll link to, no, because they didn't post photos on Flickr or anything. I don't know, but either way, I'm proud of them. Awesome. But, um, also, my mother-in-law slash their mother was here this past weekend, so that was an interesting mess of um, language confusion, spoken word confusion, just confusion. But that all is fine. I have no problems with that. Um, the move is obviously going to be stressful because all moves are always stressful no matter what. And the fact that I am under a deadline, this is the first place that I am basically handling the move myself here in Norway. That's very stressful. Um, Zone is currently playing with plastic bags. So of course he is. Um, but that's not the only source of stress going on right now, to put it mildly. So to tell you about the rest, I need to go back a bit further and we need to talk about mental health. So, I am a resident of the Kingdom of Norway, and as a result of being a resident, I am a, like, considered to be permanent residency, even though I have to renew it every year, but I'm effectively a permanent resident of the Kingdom of Norway, and as a result, I am paying into the Norwegian health scheme, as is every other resident of Norway, basically, other than the couple of Americans who have opted out. I'm still not entirely sure why you would do that, so I'm starting to understand why. Um... As a result, I am entitled to various rights, a la my health is taken care of, and so on. So I have a primary health, primary care physician here in Norway. She's not exactly the greatest physician that I've dealt with. Um, I have a hunch that a lot of it is just due to the fact that she has 1,500 patients, but... And the health system here is ridiculously overburdened. Like, her first day at the clinic was the day I was assigned to her as a patient. There are zero openings for any doctor in the entire city of Bergen. Everybody has a wait list. The shortest wait list is over 60 people long. So, I'm going to cut the individual a lot of slack but I'm going to be directing a lot of my ire at the health system itself. Um, I have various health conditions. I know that I've talked in a prior video about my endeavors in trying to get my medication, which was interesting. Um, but in September, I had my physical. I schedule my physical every year. I schedule it on my birthday. That way I remember to do it. And it's just, okay, whenever is the next available, that's when my physical is. It ends up being roughly once a year. And for somebody with as many medical problems as I have, it's a good idea to see your doctor once a year or more frequent. In my case, it's going to be more frequent. There's no way in hell it's not. Um, and I had mentioned on there, hey, look, I was involved with a... Um, involved with therapy, mental health therapy, that is, and I would like to resume that here. And what are the next steps? From everything that I had read, it's basically you talk with your primary care physician and you go from there.
my physical ended up taking two appointments. And it's not because I had anything particularly unique about it. In fact, that was the least thorough physical I have ever had, where she missed several very obvious things, like the fact that my ears were completely clogged. Um, but the first physical appointment was entirely taken up by me filling out a form, or basically her, not even just basically, this is a literal quote, why are you depressed? Said exactly like that. Ah, uh, seriously? Um, so I had to explain the situation, had to explain the fact that, no, I do not have contact with my family because my family is mostly dead at this point. I have one grandmother remaining and beyond that I'm out to aunts, uncles, and cousins. So there isn't a family safety net for me to talk to or anything like that other than my partner. My partner has their own problems. I still talk to them constantly about things like this, but you know, don't want to overburden them or anything. And yeah, I had been going through um, what's colloquially called talk therapy. Um, I am blanking on the actual term now. I'm sure editor me will probably end up editing it in if I ever get a chance to edit. But basically I spoke with a therapist. My prescription for therapy, so to speak, was that I was supposed to speak with a therapist once a week to once every other week. That never actually ended up happening because mental health is at a premium in the state of Wisconsin. So the actual schedule was once every three to four weeks, except that we had to cancel so often and ended up turning into about once every other month. And then uh, my therapist had left practice. So there was a seven month gap, I think it was, between therapists. I got another therapist as I was working on moving had a few appointments for like a month and a half and then moved here. So I was requesting mental health services and after filling out their stupid form for, hey, look, do you have anxiety? Do you have depression? Oh, hey, look, this person scored a near perfect score on anxiety. I wonder why. Um, she filled in paperwork on her side and went, okay, I have sent in the paperwork. You will be rejected. What? So it turns out that somewhat recently, as in within the past few years, uh, the Kingdom of Norway changed their mental health services. Uh, I think they changed more than just mental health. I think it was just specialist services in general, but for the, from my perspective, it's just mental health services, where before it was, hey, look, if the public um, programs were full for whatever reason, and your doctor deemed it necessary, you can be transferred over to a private program that was certified by the country that would provide those services. Um, namely, in my case, it would basically be, hey, look, if we don't have any therapists available, we'll transfer you over to a therapist and we'll pick up the tab. Outside of the copay that I'm paying. And that stopped a few years ago. I don't know exactly how many years ago. My my doctor just said a few years ago. I think this might have been about 2017, 2018. But basically, the Kingdom of Norway no longer does that, which means that they're rationing mental health care. And they have decided that the standard for receiving any form of mental health care, mind you, I am just asking for therapy. I'm not asking for drugs. I'm not asking for intensive inpatient psychological therapy or anything like that. I am just talking about normal talk therapy. The standard for receiving normal talk therapy is that you are completely incapable of functioning as a working human being. What? Like their standard for receiving therapy is the same as the US's standard for disability. Of course I'm not going to pass that. I am theoretically functional. I am really good at pretending that I'm actually okay and I can function on a day-to-day -day basis by virtue of the fact that I'm basically pushing off all of those anxieties until it explodes. That's the whole point of me having routine therapy is that it gives me an outlet to talk. One of the reasons why I'm recording this video. It gives me an outlet to talk about the issues that I am having, try to find strategies and coping mechanisms around those issues. I cannot do that type of thing on my own. 
as per my doctor's prediction, I received the rejection from the Kingdom of Norway saying that my mental health state is too good to actually get any type of mental health care and to talk to my primary care if I want to be put on antidepressants. Yeah, because, you know, my primary mental health care problem is anxiety, not depression, so obviously antidepressants are going to do something. Never mind the fact that I have a history of horrifically overreacting slash having extremely nasty side effects to antidepressants. It is a class of medication that my doctor back in Wisconsin, along with my therapist, they had both actually agreed of it would be incredibly dangerous to put me on said medication. So I guess I'm supposed to die or something? I don't get it. Um, I started looking into private practice therapy, which doesn't seem to be a common thing around here because it is hideously expensive. Um, the only place that I found prices available online were about 3,000 kroner per, was it a 20 minute or a 30 minute session? Uh, 3,000 kroner is about $2,800 or so for 30 minutes. What? I can't afford that. That's my rent. Um, oh, more than my rent. I, what? How is anybody supposed to take care of this? I'm living in a country that is so gripped by seasonal affective disorder that there are towns that install mirrors at the top of mountains to bring sunshine down to the ground to make people not as depressed. What the hell is going on? And also, what the hell did I get myself into by moving here? I was completely floored by all of this. I had no anticipation of, you know, I fully expected to be put on a waiting list or something like that. That's the reason why I contacted my primary, because I expected the answer is, all right, we'll put you on a waiting list. It may take a year. I did not expect the, yeah, we're just not going to. Go screw yourself. So that's a thing. Um... That's been one of the major sources of problems. Uh, another major source of problems came a week ago. Uh, so this is work-related. And I am not going to name my workplace, even though you can probably find it fairly easily. And I am not going to say anything negative about my place of work itself. But I am going to be revealing a lot of workplace anxieties, so... Just a heads up. On Monday, the I there was a all staff members meeting, which this happens monthly. And the let me get some more water. Um, the previous one had been delayed. It's fine. Oh, actually, backing up a bit. A few weeks ago, I was flown to Madison, uh, the city that I was living in prior to moving here to Bergen. It is also the city that the development team that uh, of the company that I work for is kind of centrally located at. It's where the office is. The most number of developers live in that city or in or around that city, even though a lot of us are kind of flung throughout North America and also Europe, in my case. Um, we were all flown in for a week-long conference. It was a great time. Um, the CEO of the company was there even, gave a speech, actually seemed like a reasonable speech for once. It seemed a little weird to me that the CEO would show up for a dev conference, but, you know, the CEO was just based in Chicagoland, I think, so not that far away. And he showed up from time to time anyway, even without there being a conference, so whatever. Um, this past Monday, which is, you know, five days ago, we had a all-staff meeting. Again, it had been postponed, but that's not uncommon, to put it mildly. They they try to have all staff meetings monthly, and it never ends up on an exact monthly cadence. But at the meeting, it was unveiled that the company that I work for has been acquired by another company. That other company is a public corporation. The company that I currently work for until the 1st of November, when this is effective, is a private corporation. For those of you that are not well-versed in how American corporations work, basically a private corporation means that there are, it is not a publicly traded stock. You cannot go out and buy the company I work for as stock. 
There might be a shareholder agreement, but it's entirely private, namely the owners are the owners, and that's that. They don't have a duty to shareholders or anything like that. It is just, hey, look, I made this nifty company. Now buy my stuff. Um, a public corporation, on the other hand, is one that whose shares are available on a stock market. Um, I'm not actually sure which stock market the company that I'm going to be working for is a part of, but whatever, they're publicly available shares. And as a public corporation, the corporation has a duty to maximize shareholder profit. This is key. And this is also part of the so-called initiatification of a lot of tech companies around the world, especially Google, is that their stockholders are demanding maximized profits for that quarter. It's something that I have not exactly been the world's biggest fan of, to put it mildly. And I had even mentioned at that dev gathering, I'm sure glad that I work for a private corporation so I don't have to worry about those things. Naturally, like, Four days later, surprise, um, that turned my world upside down. And let me give you a little bit of insight as to why. So again, I am not stating anything about the company itself. I've only done like limited research into the company that's acquiring the one that I'm working for now. So I don't even really know that much about them. They could be sunshine, rainbows, perfectly fine, everything's okay, and I have no issues. But, a um, couple of facts. One, I'm probably one of the most expensive software developers that the company that I work for has. Um, my salary is actually shrinking by the day because of the exchange rate, but um, when I transferred over from the US to Norway, Effectively, what the company I was working for did was that they outsourced HR and effectively let me go to work for a, a third-party company that is contracting back to the company that I was working for. Uh, the reason for that is to simplify HR purposes. Namely, the company that I currently work for doesn't have to have an HR presence in Norway. The HR company handles all of that. They handle paying of my paychecks. They handle any of the taxes that need to come out of my paycheck. So all of that is taken care of by that third-party company. But naturally, the company that I work for has to pay more for it. Um, from what I've seen online, I don't know the exact numbers for myself. I'm just judging this based off of online. They're effectively paying an extra 40% above my salary, or above my payroll, because there's the other part of payroll taxes. And I know I've explained this in another video, but long story short, Companies pay taxes on employees before their paycheck, and the employees also have taxes coming out of their paycheck. Norway has higher taxes in the U.S., even though technically right now I'm actually paying less in tax. Weird, but whatever. Um, but they also have higher payroll taxes, which means that the company that I'm working for is paying more money for me in taxes. What this means is that even though the HR company in question is charging an extra 40% above my pay, they're also charging more because they're paying more for me, even though my salary actually dropped when I moved instead of rose. So my rough estimate is that they are paying an extra 75% above my salary. What this means is that I am a very obvious, highly paid target. If any company was going to look at hmm, how do we save some money? They're going to look at my high paid ass and go, mm, yeah, no, get out. Um, or not highly paid because I would imply that I'm actually receiving said money instead of actually making significantly less than I did in Madison, thanks to those exchange rates. Um, so high costing ass, there we go. So I panicked, uh, understandably so. Because my whole plan was to basically make sure that I stayed employed from an American company, in this case the one I'm working for, until I am fluent in Norwegian. At that point, then I can consider potentially changing over to a company physically located in Norway, because I would at least be able to compete. 
but not necessarily changing companies or anything. I don't like job hopping personally, even though that has definitely been to my detriment overall in my career. They have stated that there will not be any changes until at least January 1st of 2025. So I know I have at least a year plus some change. But that doesn't mean that I haven't shifted over into panic mode. In fact, I have been in one long panic attack for the past week, ever since hearing about this news and basically my brain broke. I haven't exactly been all that functional. Okay, there is not a kitty. Oh, there is a kitty behind me. He's just directly behind me. Um, I have not exactly been functional. I haven't been able to focus on anything. We'll go with anything, anything at all. Um, And all I want to do is get out. I want to be out of the situation. I don't want to deal with any of this. This has been impossible. So now that I've caught you up with everything that's happened in the past two months, all of which happened in the past month, part two, other things going on in my brain. So my Norwegian is awful. Um, it's probably best said that I cannot speak Norwegian. I can speak some. Like, I can say hello, I can say goodbye, I can say yes, no. I can do very, very minor Norwegian. Uh, effectively, like, the equivalent of you've taken one year of high school Spanish level of language skill, it's not much. And in fact, in some ways, it's lower than that for spoken. Uh, written Norwegian, I'm doing better than that. I can go grocery shopping without having to break out Google Translate for the most part, unless if it's some weird food that I'm not familiar with in English either. Um, I can go about my daily life without needing to know any additional Norwegian at this point, other than the work problem that I had mentioned in the previous section. Um, and that's basically been where my Norwegian has been for the past five months. I have learned a little bit of Norwegian in the time that I've lived here, but not much. And that's a problem. So I had been using a program called Memrise, um, or service technically, called Memrise. I had tried out Duolingo. I didn't like the way Duolingo was handling things, so I switched over to Memrise. I am paying for it. It seems fine, although I had stopped it for a while because there was too much stuff going on. I have intended to pick it back up after coming back here and then panic happened and I have not done anything since. But my intention was I would start learning Norwegian by immersion. Immersion is the only successful way I've ever learned any type of foreign language. Like once upon a time I would have considered myself partially fluent in Spanish. It's because I lived in South Florida and I lived around more Spanish speakers than English speakers. So I had to learn Spanish. It was being immersed in the cultures of South Florida. I had expected something similar to happen with Norwegian, and it hasn't. And the reason why it hasn't is that I'm not immersed in Norwegian culture. I'm not immersed in Norwegian at all. Um, here. Take a look at what you see outside. You notice that there's an island over to the left. To the right is actually the mainland. You just can't see where it connects because it's off to the right. But you may notice something as you're looking at this. There aren't that many houses. I'm living in Bergen city limits for reference. It's on the edge of Bergen, but I am living within city limits. And you will notice a lack of anything commercial visible. Well, I guess there is that over there is technically industrial, but um, yeah, I am basically living in a suburb. This is where my partner and I had decided to move to because my partner didn't like how much noise everything else was and lots of other complications with the move later, this became the viable option. And my main concern was the fact that it was so far away from everything, whereas my partner's main concern is that it's so close to everything. This means that I'm isolated from Norway, effectively. So I'm not engaging with Norwegians on a daily basis. In fact, outside of my partner, I see people that aren't, uh, what, maybe once or twice a week that aren't my partner? 
I actually see more Americans through like video chats and so on than I see Norwegians. And because my capability of speaking Norwegian is so low and my partner doesn't speak all that much Norwegian either by virtue of the fact that I'm the only one that they're talking with most of the time, I'm not being immersed in Norwegian, so I'm not learning it because I'm not talking to anyone. And that's awful for me, mental health wise, especially. Um, when I visited Madison, it felt like a breath of fresh air. It was relaxing, even though I had, was basically flown over to Madison for a week and a half of a very, very busy packed business trip for four of those days and like working remotely for one of those days and the rest of the time I was vacation. But it was like, um, what's the quote that's been going around recently? Um, exhaling a breath that I didn't know that I was keeping in. Madison doesn't feel like home. It stopped feeling like home roughly part of the way through the pandemic. But it feels a hell of a lot closer to home than here. And I can actually be myself there. I can socialize with people. I can talk with people. I can just pick up a conversation anywhere because I know, one, all the cultural cues this, that a person is giving off saying that, yes, they're okay with talking with me. Um, when I got my COVID shot while I was there, uh, which that's another story with Norwegian healthcare. Um, when I got my COVID shot while I was there, when I was waiting online for it because they had a long backup because they only had one pharmacist, I ended up picking up a conversation with the person that was immediately behind me in line. And we ended up talking for 20 minutes straight about just random things. I can't do that here. One, culturally, Norwegians tend to be very quiet and distant. Um, they don't really warm up to you unless if they're drunk or you're a long-term friend. I don't drink, and obviously I'm not going to be a long-term friend of anybody but my partner here. Because I've only been here for five months. Um, and two, we share the same language. I could just talk. I don't have to pause, think about what I need to say in Norwegian, say it, listen to what they're saying, pause, translate it into my mind, hope that I got the translation right, pause, translate it back into, you get the idea. It's an awful experience for me as somebody who has been monolingual for most of their life. Um, and it's exhausting for me. Like I went from somebody who delighted in having conversations with people and talking about things that I'm interested in to being afraid of if the cashier is going to say something that I did not expect. I am genuinely thinking about leaving Norway and coming back to the US. Not right now. Um, I am definitely giving it another year minimum. I will go out at least to the end of my upcoming lease. But this has been awful. I, I don't know how to explain to Kriotir about how bad this has been for me and my health. Not just mental health, but also physical and emotional health. Because my experiences are so different from theirs that it's like a fish trying to describe to a bird how to swim. Except that some birds do swim. That's probably a bad analogy. It's a bird trying to describe to a fish how to soar in the clouds. It's completely foreign of a concept. And the things that I'm dealing with are a very foreign concept to a lot of people. Not just my partner, but probably most people. Because I'm an extrovert living in an introvert country and it's hurting a lot. My physical health has deteriorated significantly. My mental health has deteriorated precipitously. It's not been a great time. And I knew coming over here that it wasn't going to be all roses. I knew that, hey, look, this might be the best decision for me right now, but the reason why it's the best decision for me to move 
wasn't necessarily because Norway is so much better than the US, blah, 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 blah. No, the reason why is that I wanted to see my partner more often than just, you know, a couple of months a year. And that part has been good. But that's been the only game that I've had moving here. Everything else has been worse. Well, maybe not everything. The weather's been better. But I could have moved anywhere in the U.S. and gotten better weather than Madison. Let's be honest. Madison does not exactly have the greatest weather in the world. Um, I don't like it here. And I'm rapidly approaching I hate it here. I haven't seen outside of... So if I was able to teleport my partner with me to move wherever, this would definitely not be the place that I would live. And I'm having a hard time seeing myself here long term. Because, honestly, I'm having a hard time seeing myself survive this long term. This is really bad. And I don't know how to make it better. Like... So my plan at the moment, once I move, is to find out where the closest language center is, because the city of Bergen does actually provide for free Norwegian lessons, or I think it's technically the uh, county of Vestland, but whatever, or province, <sighs> translation conventions, whatever. Anyway, um, the government is providing Norwegian lessons. I just can't easily make them, because even if they're after work, they're at like 6 p.m. equivalent, which I work until about 6 to 7 p.m. And I'm also 20 minutes away from the bus. So I really can't make those classes. S but when I move, I'm going to be closer to the bus stop, so at least I don't have this horrifically long travel slash commute that I have to do immediately after work or during work even. It might honestly be easier for me to take classes first thing in the morning if they're available, but... I need to find where those options are to know how long it will take me to get there and back. Um, and maybe that will help with things. Uh, one thing that has helped quite a bit is that I now have a routine D&D game going on physically here in my house. And it's been nice to actually talk with people that aren't just my partner on a social basis. Unfortunately, one of the players is a... Uh, which we call an exchange student, which means that he's going to be gone after the end of the semester. But it's a start. Um, what else? So this was supposed to be three parts, and I've only said two parts. <sighs> yeah, this is what's been going on in my brain, basically, of I can't keep track of anything anymore. It's like... All of a sudden, I have all of the symptoms of ADHD that I've had this entire time, to be honest, but they're far more in focus because I can't cope with anything at this point. Um, the cats are doing well, actually. While they're currently separated, one of them... Ah, for me. Tilt that down a bit. One of them's right behind me. Um... Ever since I got back to Madison, or back from Madison, gotta get back into that habit, um, I have basically been sleeping with both cats out and about overnight. There's times that I have to separate them. I have them separated right now because I'm recording a video and didn't want to have to get up constantly to make sure that they're not killing each other. Not to mention they were both in crazy cat hour mode when I had started. But in general, they're behaving fairly well together now. The incidents are far fewer. Uh, the time that I have to keep them separated is far less. I don't even bother separating them while I'm taking a shower anymore. Um, and the incidents, when they do happen, tend to be far lighter. It's more that I'm trying not to have those incidents escalate to something worse, rather than it's already something worse and they're attacking each other. So, that's nice. Unfortunately, I'm going to be wrecking their day when I move which is next week. Um, other things. So I am, 
as mentioned repeatedly, I am moving next week. Ooh. I have a bunch of Starfield episodes still. I believe episode 8 will be going up today, which will probably be up before, or which will probably be released before this is finished uploading. Um, just because that's the way it works for me. Uh, I have recorded up to episode, I believe, 25 or 26. And my editing process doesn't take very long anymore. Now that I finally gave up on adding in editor comments most of the time, but also I found a quicker way for me to render things. Turns out the way I was handling green screening was a single-threaded process, so my nice, beefy 12-core CPU, it was only using one of the cores. Oops. Um... <coughs> I also ended up buying the full version of DaVinci Resolve Studio so I can use my extremely overpowered GPU for rendering. So that has decreased rendering times to the point where before I was rendering a 4K video at about, was it like six and a half frames per second? And now I'm rendering at around 900 frames per second. So the rendering times are way faster Unfortunately, my upload time is still garbage because I only have a 100 megabit connection at the moment. I will be upgrading that after I move, but I'm going to handle that after I move. Um, so this will be uploaded the same day as episode 8 going live. Episode 8 is the last episode that I have edited and uploaded, but I have been trying to do them in packages of 3 or 4 at a time. So I'm going to do that probably tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. There's so damn much going on right now. Um, I know there was something else. What was it? This was supposed to be three parts, and that wasn't one of the parts. Um, yeah, it's gone. Hope you've enjoyed this life update, Internet. I'll talk to you next time, I suppose. Bye.